good afternoon, uh, morning, evening, in that order, okay, because we have a lot of people from different um, part of the world that are listening to us. Uh, my name is Abiodun Oke of the Sierra Project Services. I'm also uh, the network coordinator as the, at the Supply Jobs Canada Network. Today, I have a colleague, a professional, and uh, a member of our network. Uh, he's also a mentor within our group uh, by the name Medu Islam. Uh, welcome, uh, Medu. Thank you, Abedan. Thank you very much for inviting me. Okay. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, today, we do have an opportunity to chat with Medu uh, in this series of supply chain career journeys of our members. Uh, today, we're gonna have some discussions with Medio so that we can gain, gain some insight into uh, some of the things that he has been able to accomplish. As a matter of fact, we like to celebrate uh, his transition in Canada in, in terms of having left his home country in Bangladesh, uh, relocated to Canada with family and then he also has been successful in breaking into the supply chain uh, profession here in Canada. And that's what we're here to celebrate. We're here to celebrate diversity. We're here to celebrate uh, his accomplishment, even generally uh, in supply chain, starting from the uh, time when he first got his first job in supply chain management. Uh, hopefully uh, the listeners, uh, the mentees and all the other uh, guys in the supply of Canada network can benefit a lot from it. even those who are not part of our network but they are also looking to immigrate and have a career in Canada will gain a lot from uh, his journey his own perspectives and his experience uh, integrating uh, in the industry here in Canada so welcome again uh, Middle East Thank so you. um uh, what we have been doing recently is to uh, learn more about your journey through your biography. But you know, I would then start to talk about you know your personal journey beyond just that biography, so that people can actually gain insight into your personality. So we will start with uh, the biography uh, going forward for now. Medu Islam is an experienced procurement and supply chain management professional, having a project management professional certification, that is the PMP, supply chain management professional certification as the SCMP, as from the SCMA Ontario, Canada. He is also uh, an MSIPS as a member of Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply uh, management with the charter status from CRPS, United Kingdom, and a master's degree in procurement and supply chain management. He completed his MBA majoring in finance. He has more than seven years of practical experience in high volume, dynamic, end to end procurement management. He is skilled in budgeting, evaluation, negotiation, contract, and vendor management. He has worked for the public education sector, trans, transit agency, financial institutions, and manufacturing organizations. Great. Currently, he is working for the Ontario Education Collaborative Marketplace as a sourcing analyst, where he works on the large scale sourcing projects for the ed educational institutions, broader public sector, PBS, and other non not for profit organizations in Ontario. Great. So that is Medu Islam's biography and his journey so far in supply chain management. Uh, where you're welcome again, Medu Islam. Uh, we were gonna, we're gonna start with, you know, even learning more about you on a personal level, you know, to have some perspective into your own personality. Can you give us some idea as to uh, who you are by telling us about yourself? Thank you, Abhidun. Uh, thank you again for inviting me uh, in the session. So uh, you have to already told something about me. I'd like to add saying something about uh, my personal life. Uh, for example, I actually received the compliment from my friends and my colleagues that I am an amicable person, a sincere person, I'm sincere to my works. 
And uh, but what I always feel something about special about me that I always enjoy helping others. Actually, when I see someone is benefited because of my information sharing or any kind of help, I feel great. For example, after landing in Canada, I landed in Canada in 2018, the March, month of March with my wife. After coming here, in fact, when I started my job, since then, I have been mentoring uh, newcomers from Bangladesh, uh, my home country and other countries as well for like uh, more, about more than two years. So uh, I like to spend my time with my family uh, and definitely with my friends as well. I like to go outside. I, I, like, I love traveling. I love spending time with my uh, siblings and uh, others. And uh, uh, I always, uh, I, 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 I am a very fun loving person. Uh, whenever in my leisure time, uh, I love watching different movies like social comedies, actions, Netflix series, documentaries. Uh, I love reading novels, different articles. Procurement is uh, my field of actually passion. So whenever I get time, I always try to read uh, the latest articles on procurement uh, in uh, different magazines. For example, supply chain management magazines uh, and the Procurious, uh, different websites we have in supply chain on logistics. I always go through that. So that's something about myself. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, sounds great. Um, you know, the one thing I like to, uh, you know, like a question I like to pose to you, you know, to um, basically get some insight into your personality. It is what, what is one thing that even your close friends, you know, don't even know about you that you can share with us? The thing is, uh, what I feel that I'm a very soft-hearted person. Uh, people actually know about that, but in some cases, uh, I think that I'm very strong. So uh, actually, it, it actually depends from uh, context to context. Uh, so uh, what I feel that uh, if someone actually reaches a conclusion that yes, that person is soft-hearted, that is not the conclusion. Okay. okay. <laughs> I get you. I get you. So um, here is a question um, going forward with in that direction. Uh, what is one thing about uh, Bangladesh culture uh, that you missed, you know, having relocated to Canada? You know, like this gives you memory, you know, sometimes you get into that uh, zone where you, oh, you missed something about, you know, where you're coming from the moment. Uh, uh, some moments, you know, you you would have an air in Canada. What will that be? You know, you know uh, Bangladesh is my birthplace, so it's always very special. Definitely, I miss my parents, my siblings, and I'm sure it's vice versa. They also miss me. I am the eldest child of my parents, and uh, definitely, it's very special to be uh, the eldest child. Uh, I also miss my friends there, my, the town. I have a lot of great memories with my friends there, uh, with my colleagues as well. I spend great time with my colleagues there. Uh, one special thing I would like to say that the food I really miss because the thing is food cooked by my mom, my, that was very special. Uh, uh, and also the foods in different restaurants. So uh, we have some Bangladeshi restaurants here in Toronto. In yes. Toronto we have some Bangladeshi restaurants here. But the thing is, you know, that uh, that original taste that is uh, missing. So I miss Okay. I, know. I, I, can, I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> I can yeah, relate. True. So, um, uh, you know, like uh, there are some people who, of course, they haven't been to Bangladesh and they are here in Canada. Uh, is there anything that if they visit Bangladesh or they uh, visit Dakar, what is that one thing you would like them to go and, and see there? Actually, uh, Dhaka has some different historical places. You know that it was uh, the Bangladesh, it was, I mean, Bangladesh or Indian subcontinent that was once a British colony. So there are a lot of things, a lot of places where actually, if anyone visits, they will get that touch of uh, British uh, room. That, that. And uh, there are many different like forts there and castles there are the places there where actually it's a lot, uh, it has a lot of history associated with those places. But one thing I'd like to say that the food there, because it's spicy and there's some special food, 
uh, in Bangladesh, which I would say that if anyone visits, that they should go and uh, taste okay. that, try food that, yes. And one thing I'd like to say that we have a national festival that is called uh, Pahela Boishak, we, we say. We have a Bengali New Year. So the first day of the New Year, that is, we, it's, it's kind of like uh, on that day, we arrange a carnival in Bangladesh, it's like a carnival. So that day, it, everyone is festive, everyone wears colorful dress, and uh, it's a great unity. So if anyone actually goes there that day, they will see that how much colorful the city, I mean, the Dhaka, that city is. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, as you are, you know, telling me about all this, and I'm kind of getting interested in more and more and more stuff about Bangladesh. The, the one question I had in my mind, what are the, the different type of religions, or let's say the main religions of Bangladesh? It's Islam. Actually, uh, more than 90% people, they are Muslim there. Uh, but one thing I'd like to say that uh, the unity of different religions, that is great there. Because people like Hindu, Christian, Buddhist, Sikhs, all are there. And people actually love harmony. The way they live in harmony. And for example, during my growing up, whatever actually i have uh, friends from different religions but what we would like to say that it's not kind of religion it's like culture right so religion is culture so uh, i i had many friends from different religions but uh, in fact sometimes we didn't know that they were in different religions so we respect each other and that is the speciality of our country yeah. great to know great to know so uh, coming back here to to canada right um, I'm sure when you visited Canada, there might be something that stands out for you, you know, coming from a different cultural background. Is there anything that you can remember like, okay, well, the very first month of your landing here in Canada, there's something that you saw, I, you felt like, like a shock, you know, like, oh, this happens in Canada, right? Like, what is that thing? The thing is, you know, that there is this specific thing that is called Canadian culture. Canadian culture is a mix of different culture, European, Asian, African, uh, um, Chinese, and a lot of things, actually, you know, Middle Eastern. So a lot of, uh, we, we, we do not say that melting pot. It's not like a blend of everything. We actually call it cultural mosaic because we uh, respect diversity. We respect different cultures. But what actually after landing here, what I felt that people are very, very friendly here very friendly and very cooperative they are gentle they are calm and kind i really like that and the other thing is people actually love to talk a lot <laughs> they love to talk a lot small very talk. big areas yes small talk and sometimes long talk as well i, I like that Okay. And uh, uh, because uh, you know that you know, in Asian countries, we actually love to do work more. Yes, mm -hmm. we love to talk, but more uh, work comes. But here, people actually decide work, they love to talk. And the other thing I'd like to say that coffee. Canadians, mm -hmm. they love coffee, yeah? right? Mm -hmm. So back home, back home in Asian countries, actually, I was habituated with drinking tea more. But here, nowadays, actually, I love coffee. I, yeah, tea Hortons. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that, that's interesting. That's interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, in terms of, you know, the, the, the one thing, the two things I think I pick out from what you're talking about, because it's important that people who are coming to Canada you know, and they are not exposed to the culture here, understand. You talked about, you know, the friendliness of uh, Canadian people and then also a melting pot of different cultures. Uh, you have uh, also a situation where, or this this culture where we, we, we like small talks. Small yeah. talks are really how you get to know people more, you know, exactly. how to get to yeah. build rapport with people. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess that's, that's also ties into the friendliness part of, uh, culture, and do you know more. what actually helped me because of this long talk what helped that i actually came to know about canada very quickly because whenever i talk to somebody and i actually received a lot of information so that one was i think that yes i enjoy talking and it's now uh, nowadays i actually i think that yes i have become a bit talkative as well positively <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean there's a lot of talk about you know um, you know the weather is a big topic here in canada yeah. if you're so meeting scary. somebody for the first time you know you yeah. talk about how cold it is or how warm it is or you know whatever you have yeah. to talk about the weather <laughs> No. True. The thing is, the thing is, you know, that back home, I, I, I can hardly recall that I, uh, I have ever actually checked the weather forecast every day. But during winter here, you <laughs> yeah, see that yeah. every day we always check the weather. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's big. That's big for yeah. Canada, actually. That's a big topic. 
Uh, so uh, so let, let's go into, you know, how you came about the supply chain management, uh, you know, profession, because everybody kind of have different amount of experience of, about how I got into the profession. Uh, well, what, what is your first ever job like, you know, in, in supply chain management? How, how did you break into this profession, starting out from maybe, let's say, when you graduated from school or however you came about it? How, how did that happen? Actually, uh, uh, my career actually started with a part-time job. So when I was doing my MBA, I was a part-time teacher. So uh, I, I, I taught in, a, in an education center. So I, I, I taught there around like two years. But I started my full-time job not in supply chain. I started my full-time job in a research field. I was a marketing research professional. I, st I worked there for like... Uh, four months and after that I switched to uh, procurement and supply chain management field. So uh, the thing is uh, my first full-time job there I did qualitative and quantitative research, market research, data analysis. I used Stata, SPSS and other qualitative and quantitative analysis tools to analyze data. I went to fields, I did, I conducted focus group discussions, I did market oh, yes. uh, in-depth interviews. So uh, that actually uh, in that job what I love that I I actually entered in depth uh, in different uh, cases, context, research objectives, and I that that helped me actually learn uh, that how it, it is like analytical thinking. I, I adapted that, which actually helped me later in my procurement and supply chain fields. Yeah. Uh, whenever I did budgeting, I prepared like procurement planning. I I, I, I apply, applied that uh, skills of mine. The other thing that the hating or the not liking about my job there, the first full-time job that I did not actually dislike anything there because the people there, the, my colleagues there, they were very friendly. And um, uh, my supervisor, he was a very sensible person, very prudent one. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. And the next one, uh, that was in Bangladesh as well. Um, I mean, uh, my first procurement job there. So uh, I actually love the challenges there because that was in public procurement field and our organization was a government owned organization. So mm -hmm. our speed was not that slow because we are a for profit organization, but it was a government owned organization. So we had to follow public procurement rules, but at the same time, we had to go for uh, revenues, profits. Oh, yeah. So that speed was there. So I loved the challenge there. Every day there was there were there were there were new cases and there were new problems. And where there were any problems, there was opportunity of learning. Yeah. So every day I felt that I was becoming experienced. I was becoming confident, and that was something very special. Colleagues there were very friendly. What I felt that uh, they understood uh, um, um, uh, that uh, there was some process limitation for procurement, they need time. So they were very cooperative. And my supervisor there, I am very thankful to him all, all the time because I always got him uh, beside me there. So, um, and um, I think that I, the one thing I'd like to say that I still have very strong communication with them. I mean, my two former uh, organizations in Bangladesh. Great, great. That, I mean, that's... Uh... Uh, you know, when you live an organization and you're still in contact with those folks who are there, uh, it shows uh, it's a positive uh, outcome, you know, even though you haven't, uh, you're not working with them anymore, you, you build that relationship and you still continue. Uh, you build yeah. it. And that's really great. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, here is uh, one, though we, we, we learn a lot as, you know, you talk about, you know, all the different type of skills that you worked on while you're trying to, uh, uh, you know, before you broke into the supply chain management uh, profession, which I believe it's, it's a strength because when you're talking about those things, I realize that, yeah, those are really great uh, skills to uh, to have uh, you know in supply chain management. But I imagine that when you were interviewing uh, or uh, even at any point in time, maybe here in Canada or outside before you came in, uh, you probably have had some events, you know, like maybe job such event that you consider to be maybe a failure or, uh, you know, something you you learned from, you know, there's an event that happened that you learned from that. I believe, uh, you know, the folks listening, uh, the, you know, to us would want to know what are those things that you consider uh, do those type of events that you learn from that you like to share with them about, especially about, you know, job search uh, events, you know, that you can share with them. 
Yes, uh, the one thing I'd like to say that I always try to replace failure with the word learning because the thing is, you know that uh, what I always feel that if actually God uh, closes any door, that means another door is already open. So we actually need some time to reach that. So I always feel like that. So uh, whenever there is any failure, I think that yeah, this door was mainly, um, not normally, I mean, uh, not for me, maybe. So I actually try. Uh, the thing is, after coming here, I started uh, applying uh, for jobs actually from the second week of my landing. I was, I was uh, uh, actually, I started. I was very optimistic. I, I actually I was very eager to <laughs> get a job. Uh, people, uh, people are around who are not actually. There were some negative influences. People sometimes told me negatively that um, employers like natives or people who do uh, certifications or degrees who have degrees. I mean, the Canadian degrees they are preferred here. But uh, I, I actually thought that let's try. I, uh, th that was the thing. Let's keep trying. So the thing is, although you know that there are opportunities or options for like survival jobs or other jobs uh, like I, I I thought that I will I would not change my field I will I, I would try I would try so I, I started trying so there are some uh, uh, challenges I, I, I would like to say for example uh, you see the structure of resume uh, the back home which resume we, we go back home actually in Bangladesh we, we call those curriculum vitae CV. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Resu resu resume, this term is not that much popular in Asian countries, <laughs> but here people know about resume. Right. Yeah. So the structure of resume, for example, I prepared my resume, but when I was uh, doing some research, I saw that, for example, it's a tips for newcomer that just start reading your resume. Just uh, spend like 10 seconds on the resume and see that within that 10 seconds, how much you go in the resume you'll see that not more than half page actually when employers go through a resume they do not have that much time lots of resume so try to uh, ensure that the important information about yourself is like at the top mm. uh, so that that interests the employer and so that they feel interested to go to the next right so uh, I did not know about that. So I, I, I knew about that through doing some research through some blogs. And also, Abiyodun, you can recall that I also talked to you as well after landing here. Yeah. So uh, so I, I, knew, I knew from that. And other thing is the interview, interview preparation. So for example, uh, after, after getting interview call, what would you do? Which kind of uh, interview questions uh, you, you need to be prepared for? So because it's mainly they focus on behavioral questions accomplishments strengths weaknesses why do you want to see yourself after 10 years or five years from now so the thing is yes the thing is you have the answer you know the thing but you need to be prepared otherwise the thing is during the interview you will you will not uh, people will see that you are not organized so if the discussion is unorganized, that will have some negative impact on your confidence. So I started working on that. So yes, true. Uh, my first job was in the Toronto Transit Commission. That was not through my first interview. I had three or four interviews before that. So there were definitely, uh, um, I, I, was de I was denied in, in that job, but I, I actually never lost hope. I, I actually uh, learned something from that and the next shot I, I, I tried my best so mm -hmm. definitely I'd like to say that uh, I, I, I actually applied my learning because of that within three months of my arrival here I managed my first job I landed my first job in my field in supply chain that was in Toronto Transit. That, that's huge that's huge after three months that's that 90, days. Sure. 90 days sure. after 90 days after landing in Canada. Wow, that's and, and do you know what? That at the time, like a managing field in, I mean, managing in own the job in own field within three months, people actually did not believe that. <laughs> uh, in in 2018, nowadays it's it's okay. People are actually actually get, getting jobs, but the thing is that time, <laughs> it was. Uh, or, or like, uh, is it possible? Right. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes. People, people are actually very suspicious about that. They did not believe that. Yeah, really? <laughs> you did? <laughs> but I managed that through now, my actually. Yeah. I, I thought I had a question there. So how many interviews actually have you attended before that job? Uh, that job? Uh, to be specific, four interviews. Four interviews. And mm -hmm. what I felt, what, what I would like to say, I felt that uh, one of uh, one interview actually was better than the previous one so it was like that what actually gave me confidence and strength that uh, i was ensuring continuous improvement throughout my 
career, I always focused on this, that whether I am continuously improving, because if I can feel that, yes, I am better than the previous day, that means that, yes, I'm ensuring my quality and I am doing good justice with my quality. So uh, I always feel like that. Yeah, and that's interesting. That's interesting. I mean, I like that the comment you made there about continuous improvement, because, um, you know, the thing is, is that is a process mindset. A lot of people go into these interviews and all they have in their head is I, I need to get a job and they do not have the what they call a growth mindset you know whereby okay well even if this didn't work out you know what at least I will gain some insights I'll learn some things maybe I can get some feedback that will help me you know to progress or to make some uh, improvement towards the next interview and I think that is what you are talking about here, that you need to have a process mindset rather than just being fixated on, yeah, I need to get a job. Think of little, little, little things that you can achieve along the way as you're moving closer to that uh, first job, you know, in your career. And that would help you to even have a sense of gratitude, you know, rather than that sense of loss after I interview that, you know, because it, it, it's crazy. Sometimes I think job search as a newcomer in Canada is a psychological thing. You need to be psychologically balanced, you know, to manage the failures, the disappointments, you know, after interviews, or even not even getting any feedback, you know, after you go for an interview, because all of those things happen. But if you have a process mindset, it would help you uh, to be more confident as you make much more uh, improvement uh, each interview that you attend. Yeah, so the thing is, is, very the, thing is the thing is up to then job searching is a job itself. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's a job, you know. Um, the, the other thing is uh, I do recollect that that uh, first job was what was with the Toronto Transit. Transit uh, Commission. TTC. Oh. Uh, so the, the, I think the question I can ask you is, I know that that would have been challenging you know, uh, from a different culture, you know, now working in a Canadian culture and your first job. Uh, definitely there will be some expectation, there will be some, even uh, some pressure on you uh, to deliver because that was like your first job opportunity and pretty much you want to make sure that you impress your, your supervisor. But with all of this going on around you, you know, with family, with even even settling down in Canada yeah. itself, it's a job <laughs> by itself. Um, so my question then is, how how were you able to, be, you know, get a balance there, juggling all of these things together, uh, you know, being fulfilled, you know, uh, it's a thing I would say you need to be. Uh, in that in that uh, moment, uh, you know, trying to do all of these things together, how you how you able to keep everything together? It actually takes time. The thing is, you need to be patient. You need to be very very patient. You need to have some confidence at the same time. Be desperate, but don't uh, but be be it positively. Don't be frustrated, because what I always feel that frustration is a luxury. So uh, I actually do not have the time actually for being frustrated. I always uh, try to be optimistic uh, because you see that uh, we newcomers are uh, in totally in a new environment, right? So uh, this is completely logical and valid that we need some time to cope up here, right? So we need some time to get adjusted with this. Some people, in fact, like if I compare myself with a person who has been living here for like 15 years, it's not an apple to apple comparison because the more you live here, you will see that you will be more Canadian, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you will be more like native here, right? For example, uh, when I talk, nowadays I talk in very confident way, but uh, when I, after coming here, uh, after arriving here, I was feeling that uh, it, it's, it's, the, it's the change and definitely the time. You need to spend yeah. some time. Uh, you, you cannot uh, start or work like a native or talk like a native from the day one. You need time. So. Uh, feel uh, you need to have the confidence trust yourself stay patient and the other thing is go step by step for example after coming here job was there but the job i mean i was start i was uh, eagerly looking for a job but at the same time i had to uh, work for like uh, for, for an accommodation right for an, for an apartment you know that uh, renting an apartment is a challenging thing here they do not uh, uh, 
uh, do without any guarantors. So uh, mm. without any guarantor, you cannot rent an apartment. So it's, it's like a step-by-step -step thing. For a newcomer, this is very valid because without having an accommodation, you are not getting the peace. And without, uh, actually, if you do not have peace during the interview, actually, you look uh, actually not that much, you know, that enthusiastic or something because peace is not there, right? So, uh, it's like maintaining a proper balance between your personal life and a career, right? So mm -hmm. I always try to ensure that. I always try to spend time with my family. I always try to. And the other thing is I try never to lose hope. I always think that uh, I'm working hard and something better is waiting for me. Oh, great. Yeah, and being optimistic. I, you know, like yeah. I said, you are really an optimistic guy, you know. Oh, oh, <laughs> so you, there is another comment there that shows that you are a very optimistic person, never losing hope, uh, always uh, taking your time. It's, you know, a step at a time. You know, that process thing we're talking about, the process mindset, uh, always knowing that, you know, uh, day after day, you'll be getting closer to your goal and never to lose hope. Yeah, that's uh, very awesome. So here is um, basically how about how we met and how you became uh, the supply, you know, a member in the Supply Jobs Canada network. Uh, so uh, can, can you speak more about, you know, how, how the Supply Jobs Canada network has helped you in your integration uh, in Canada? Uh, so one thing about that Supply Jobs Canada, you know that uh, in 2018, in fact, I, I, I got the immigrant visa in 2017 at the end of that year, 2017. So uh, um, that time it was serial jobs. And the thing is, I, I knocked you on LinkedIn because actually I did not know about serial jobs or supply jobs that time, but I only knew you. So mm -hmm. I, I knocked you and I uh, uh, shared that uh, I, I, I would like to... Uh, I was coming to Canada and uh, I, I knocked you for that, that how to manage jobs or something. Oh, what should I do? Yeah. Uh, at that moment, uh, you told me actually to join some Zoom conferences. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I joined those and I saw that there are lots of supply chain professionals, which actually gave me the confidence. So uh, Supply Jobs Canada, the first thing they gave me that the confidence at that time, uh, because I really needed that. and. Uh, I, I joined the Zoom conferences back home. Like the timing, timing was not that much convenient in some cases there. Mm -hmm. Like I joined like two at night, three at night. The next day I had office, but I joined. I joined because I really wanted to know about the uh, job market here. I, I and during the Zoom conference, actually, I asked you that what should be my first target after landing in Canada, like job search or uh, looking for a Canadian degree. Your tips was that uh, look for job first, and then if you see that you cannot manage, then go for a degree. It actually helped me a lot. It helped me a lot to determine that what uh, I, I needed to do at the time. So I I am very very thankful to Supply Jobs and definitely you. I always I I, I, I always uh, tell you that that I am always grateful to you for your direction all the time. And what you know that Supply Jobs Canada till now, in fact. What I feel that, uh, uh, I don't know that, uh, there are different kinds of professionals, right? Uh, they like finance professionals, IT professionals, but you see that in WhatsApp professionals, like this vibrant and always active group we have uh, in supply, I mean, for Supply Jobs Canada, that is very, uh, I, I don't know if uh, there are a lot of uh, groups like this. We always share things, we always share our ideas, of different job advertisements, we, we always share that. And uh, for example, uh, the last week I had a conversation with with one of the person from who is a newcomer who came from Philippines. So uh, after just talking to uh, talking to him, I, I told him that we have a group Supply Jobs Canada. Please join there. And after joining, uh, he actually told me that he is getting benefited. So it's like see that when you are alone, uh, it, it's actually difficult to obtain confidence and go in confident way. But when you feel that a lots of people are there and uh, you can share something and you are confident that you will get some good great feedback and insight then uh, it, it, it's, it's really something, right? So that actually, uh, I feel that the speciality of Supply Jobs Canada, that uh, just, we are definitely, one thing is that we are ensuring diversity and we are believing that diversity is our strength, right? And we are going together. 
So that is the great thing about Supply Jobs Canada. Always yeah, great. Thanks so much for uh, talking about, um, you know, Supply Jobs Canada there. It's the one thing I would like to add to that is uh, when you are, um, you know, a member of a tribe or a community, everyone is looking out for one another. And, and I think that's uh, just like he said, as a strength of uh, a community. Uh, also beyond the fact that uh, each one of us are coming from different cultural background and that's also a strength for us in that uh, anybody that is uh, coming to Canada, you know, that you always would have somebody who is from your community or from your cultural background who can speak to, you know, some of the specific challenges that are hard to do with your cultural background. Um, and one of the strengths of that group that I also noticed actually is a lot of people when they come into Canada, there's, there's one thing we call the cultural bubble. Uh, cultural bubble being the sense that when they try to uh, integrate to Canada, they, they tend to integrate from the perspective of people of their culture, you know, and what that means is that they will want to be doing the things that people in their culture are doing, which sometimes it doesn't help, you know. It's, it's good to always have that, um, mm -hmm. that cultural support, but then it could become a cultural bubble where they are not able to integrate with the larger, you know, diverse uh, Canadian culture. And this is what we actually have in that background, uh, in that uh, group where we're we all from different cultures, we think, uh, from, from around the world. And then when somebody comes into Canada, they need to have that place where it, it gives them a very broad perspective uh, as to how each people from different backgrounds are able to uh, integrate mm -hmm. within the you know Canadian culture, and I think that's one very great strength of that group. And we it's in, in the DNA of the group, and uh, we we hope to keep that uh, going as we build this uh, into even uh, a larger group going forward. So thanks for uh, that uh, that uh, perspective you brought in there. So here is a question about how you actually brought into the supply chain management career, which I know we already asked you, but. So I'm going to skip on this one unless you have something to add to what you already said about, you know, what is that moment that actually got you that break into the supply chain management yeah. here in Canada? Uh, in, in, in Canada or in yeah. Bangladesh? Because my first uh, yeah, uh, procurement okay. job was in Bangladesh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Both. I'll I, 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 I share both. I'm sure yeah, sure, but yeah, okay, both. so one thing, okay, so, so one thing I, I've shared already that uh, I started as a marketing research professional, right? Mm. So when I joined as a procurement professional, uh, you know that in Asian countries, in fact, uh, uh, in different organizations, in procurement departments, actually, there are not a lot of people, like maximum three or four uh, people. Uh, in my previous organization in Bangladesh, I was the first procurement officer. Before me, oh. there was no procurement department. So I was actually the founder of that department. Like, <laughs> okay, interesting. <laughs> through me, it, it was there. It was So uh, uh, after joining there, I was actually a bit, uh, uh, I, was, I, was, I was thoughtful that, uh, yes, I have joined, but I was not sure that whether I would be in procurement department for a long time. I was, but after spending there uh, for uh, a couple of months, uh, in fact, like four or five months, I actually started getting interest. I was, I was feeling that there are a lot of things to do in procurement field, because the thing is, you see that uh, people usually prefer like finance department, investment department, business department, marketing, but you see that. Uh, Procurement department, in some cases, it is being ignored in, in, in some cases. But there are a lot of things to ensure here. There is a lot of things to ensure quality here. And what I felt that, uh, uh, I mean, like, just think about at the end of the day, it, it hits the balance sheet in positive and negative way, right? If you can save something, it is hitting the balance sheet at every day, on every day, in positive way. But if you are doing something like misprocurement, it's, it does it not only hit the balance sheet in negative way, but also it creates like compliance cost. It yeah. hits the, it spoils the reputation, right, of the organization. So that actually gave me uh, some like feeling of responsibility that if I stay here and if I work here, 
uh, I would actually contribute something which actually give uh, myself uh, something uh, like uh, some peace, right? Uh, that mm. I am I'm not That's only so doing work. Fulfillment, work. exactly you mean, right? fulfillment. Like yeah, because it was not like something like doing regular work, but also at the same time actually uh, contributing to the organization mm. uh, through integrity. Uh, ethics and also you know judgment due diligence these things right mm. so it, it helped me so and the other thing is that uh, uh, the next year in fact the second year uh, of my career I started doing some training and after that I started uh, doing the professional diploma in uh, CIPS Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply so awesome. when I was actually obtaining those insights and I was actually entering the depth of the procurement supply chain the future of supply chain there was some vision uh, in front of me that yes mm -hmm. I would be there and I would do something. So still right, that vision right. is in front of me. That vision is what I'd like to say that uh, I'm running after that. Running mm, after great, that. great. Yeah, so that is yeah. Awesome. That, that's interesting. That's actually common to a lot of people happen to, you know, to go into supply chain or procurement, you know, by, by chance, you know, and I see that also in your story here. Uh, you know, it's about, you know, having that fulfillment because your activity impacts the organization as a whole exactly you know and that, that you know everybody wants to be, be, be wants to be part of a, a major or a big thing happening and i think that's what really kind of uh, keeps people uh focused and having that vision just like you said you know in supply chain i mean that's 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 great that's great uh so i like to move on to the next question about um uh, let's talk about your your you know you, you mentioned just now that you uh, happened to be the first person in the procurement department when you, first, you know, got into procurement, and I'm I'm wondering that you know that in itself it's it's a kind of a leadership you know right there, you know where you're the one responsible for you know uh, leading the, the 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 business in area of supply chain management or in area of procurement. So I wonder if uh, you could share with us two major initiatives or either back home or here in canada that you have worked on you know and uh you know to share with us those projects and what makes you to be proud to have them been involved or as a leader you know or as a leader in that project and, and why those two projects you know okay so uh, i'd like to say something about uh my uh uh, work in Bangladesh there so that you know in that organization uh, our procurement department that was mainly focused on actually the cycle of procurement so this starting from the collecting requisition and maintaining the public procurement rules and regulations all the steps uh, of the under the regular rules and towards the contract uh, you know execution so after contract execution contract agreement I mean the uh, contract management or agreement management that was a responsibility of relevant department that was not my responsibility okay. but uh, in, in some cases I entered but uh, in most of the cases the relevant departments uh, were involved in that but I would like to say that uh, in I would, I would like to mention two projects where I was involved in uh, agreement management there Okay. So uh, the first one is procurement audit. That one uh, I did. That we uh, hired a third-party audit firm for conducting a procurement audit of uh, like hundred plus non-government organizations who were our business partners. I so uh, yes, yeah, huge. And when we received to the procurement audit reports, uh, I found that there was some confusion. So uh, because uh, we had the ob some objectives for the audit. And we have some concerns uh, which we expected the audit report to address, but that audit report actually was not addressing the concerns very well. So I was a bit concerned with the quality of the report. So that was an issue. So I, I, I shared that with my supervisor uh, and uh, I expressed my interest that I would like to be actively involved in, to, in the audit process. And my supervisor actually, uh, he agreed with that. So I sat with the audit team and I shared that the different points they missed in the audit report. And uh, actually I shared that how much important actually uh, it is uh, for us actually so that the concern, they meet the concerns uh, in the audit report there. Uh, the thing is I provided them the uh, direction, helped 
them actually re reassess the raw data and the points and the information. And uh, it was like uh, two months guidance. And after that, the audit report, it was a very good one and accepted very well. It was by senior management. And based on that report, what I did, I prepared procurement guidelines for 100 plus non-government organizations in Bangladesh. And I also prepared standard operating procedures, SOPs, and also uh, templates like RFQ wow. templates, RFP templates, purchase order templates, uh, like that different templates evaluation report templates i prepared to them and also i i i provided them training on those mm -hmm. so like day long training i provided them so the thing that's, is i i i, 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 I yes yeah. not like a yeah. procurement uh, organization transformation kind of you know yeah kind sure. of what i'm seeing there yeah and they're still using my guidelines, my templates, my SOPs there. So I am always proud of that, that I, 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 I contributed. Uh, in very, that, very in awesome. That way. And the second one I'd like to say, I, I, I am also very proud of that one as well. It was the uh, digitalization project. So uh, that's the thing is actually we hired a firm who would uh, the thing is like that we had our head office in Dhaka the capital city of Bangladesh and we had 12 regional office uh, in, in, in the whole Bangladesh there so in different districts so we planned actually to digitalize uh, all of the documents uh, of uh, different offices there so we hired a firm for that but the problem was the supplier firm was struggling as a uh, uh, it was a bit complex task. Uh, their methodology was okay in their proposal, but you know that uh, they were facing a problem with their um, uh, manpower and yes, and also. So, but I I felt in fact the same thing happened, and I also went to my supervisor that I wanted to be actively involved in that because the thing was if they were continuously missing deadlines. Mm -hmm. So I thought that there were some problems with their planning. So what I did my Supervisor agreed, okay, go for that. And after that, I sat with the IT professional of my organization. I sat with the relevant departments. I prepared a plan. And after that, I guided the whole team, the digitalization team, the IT professional there, the relevant units. I talked to the regional offices. I, I also, um, uh, and through the proper planning and execution, uh, in fact, uh, I, I, I sometimes there was some points that where I became concerned, but you know that when you have a very strong plan and you just go step by step, things go okay very soon, okay. right? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I follow those, yeah. Exactly. That was there, and uh, the project was successful. What I felt uh, always that it was because of good planning. I I I, I prepared that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, um, like you know, uh, even even procurement itself, you know, when you really think about the planning aspects of it, it's it's really the the main job, you know. Yeah. Like having to put a plan in place, and then um, you know executing that plan, monitoring it to make sure that it meets okay. the. And so do you know what, I, I, Adhan, I would like to, I'd like to share one thing that uh, I passed my PMP after coming in Canada, oh, right? after coming in Canada. So uh, my first certificate um, after CSCMP, it was my second certification in Canada. So the thing is that experience in project management back home in Bangladesh, mm. these different projects that helped me actually obtain insights about project management things. Yeah. So uh, I always, I, I always think that actually you know that uh, never uh, nothing goes actually something everything gives some learning right yeah exactly exactly the way i look at it always is, is if there is a problem uh yes. it's always the two sides of a coin there's a the problem side of it but then there's a learning and then also opportunity on the other side of it which uh yeah that's that's always a, a very like again your optimistic uh, <laughs> you know, mindset is like, coming yeah. up there you know so thanks for uh, sharing with us i really appreciate it. i learned a lot from that and so um i would already talk about the procurement initiative you mentioned too right now so in that, in a sense, that is still a leadership for me. But in all of these things, you know, that you've talked about in these initiatives, can you tell us, um, give us maybe two or uh, regardless of how many you want to share, what are the leadership lessons that you personally going through, uh, you know, implementing these changes or this transformation, what are those leadership lessons that you gain from that and that you like to share with us 
Uh, the thing I'd like to say that when I started my career in procurement, I shared uh, with you already that uh, I was the first procurement officer. So there was no document ready actually for procurement department, right? So for example, I started to prepare RFQ. I started preparing the RFQ document, the template there. I started, uh, I, I had to start evaluation report template i had to start rfp i had to start like a uh, work order template so i had to start everything so the thing is what i always felt that i never stopped actually uh, learning things i i was always very open to learn things because what i understand that uh, i understood at that moment that uh, if i can learn something and uh, that is very solid in that case based on that in future i would be able to lead a team and first, my first target was to obtain confidence, obtain experience, because I had enough knowledge, right? I have enough expertise. So let's apply that. So I did that. The other thing is after uh, like three years, I got a team. I had, I, I got the opportunity to supervise a team. So when I was uh, supervising the team, the first thing I felt that empathy is needed in a leader because a leader actually needs to understand that the other persons in the team how do they feel, right? In fact, uh, because you see that a person comes in an office, uh, but but they have their personal life as well, right? So yeah. uh, uh, but the, it's not like they're sacrificing everything they come. So I need to respect them, right? So empathizing things, because what I also felt that I worked the same things uh, by myself. So I knew the challenges. So whenever they were under any problem, whenever they were any issue, uh, I, it, I, I faced that already, so I understood that. So mm -hmm. that helped me uh, in uh, like ensuring empathy throughout my uh, leading the teams. So I would like to say that never stop learning. The first thing is that, and there would be always change in, in different organizations. Organizations go through different changes. So there are changes in strategy, in team, mm -hmm. in the organization, in yeah. different teams. There are a lot of technology that they come. So embrace changes all the time. Be positive and flexible to changes. That is very, very important because if you are rigid, you will always feel like confused about uh, you know, innovations and new things. Uh, that will also confuse your team. So mm -hmm. embrace changes. And the other thing is, if it's possible, innovate. So mm -hmm. if you can change, actually, if you can bring some innovation, if, if you can add something, if you can add value, add that. Mm -hmm. the, that is the, I always feel that empathy, never stop learning, and uh, innovation, uh, these things, I always feel that it's important for leadership. Great, great, great. I mean, you already summarized it there. You talked about the, yeah. you know, being open to learning, uh, definitely, because even being open to learning means that you will be open to learning from your colleagues, from your team, uh, whereby that gives you an opportunity to be able to empathize because you can, you know, understand from their perspectives what they are going through, you know, their feelings. Uh, that way you don't separate the human from the things that they are doing for you, the, the activities. Uh, they are not robots, okay? <laughs> so they are human. So even though they are working for you, you know that they also have their own human side of things. So you can understand from maybe some challenges that they are going through. Because even you yourself, you are human, and you could understand, or you're even yeah. going through some of those things yourself. So you were able to then empathize as a result of that. You also talk about uh, being um, ad um, accepting changes being um you know accepting of changes or it could be in any form shape or form you know the technology otherwise uh accepting those things and i think i think accepting it really it's um you know it's a way to say that you are uh, you are open to even proactively bringing about that change you know which is the innovation the innovation yes. aspects of it which in a way it's it's risk management as well you know yeah yeah change management risk management yeah. it it means that you are already willing to manage it and that makes you to be a more proactive uh, leader okay. so i do definitely agree with all of that uh so yeah we're wrapping up uh yeah we have another question here which is also a little bit personal and i think it's also kind of funny to ask you that question uh, like what would you like to be when you grow up so first of all, I would like to contribute more in my current organization. I would like to grow here. So I would like to ensure that um, I am uh, doing things very well, maintaining leadership, responsiveness, like yeah. that. 
I would like to ensure this here. But one thing that, uh, beside that, I have a, a plan to be a part-time trainer. Uh, okay. Like I also shared in different conversations uh, with you, Abhiyodun, that yeah. I always enjoy mentoring, training people. Right. So if I can be a part-time trainer, that would really be great. And if possible in future, maybe if I can open my own business, because my wife actually wants that, that uh, if yeah. it, uh, like an online business, like part-time, beside my regular job, I can do that, right? So if I can do that, it would be great. So it's it's good you mentioned that um, you know being you know as somebody who is uh, open minded to say that you know I just kind of want to add to that like you know the, the supply jobs Canada group it is purposefully set up for that you know yeah. I have my own thing my my thing is serial projects you know like just kind of clarify those two things you know you were saying oh you were a little bit confused with serial projects and <laughs> you know supply jobs Canada. The, the Sierra project, that's my own baby, you know. But Supply yeah. Just Canada Network is a place where we all contribute, you know, be it a consultant, be it you're a mentor, be it you're an expert uh, in any area. As long yeah. as, you know, uh, the common vision is for us to empower ourselves. So it's a place where you can already actually use it as a launching pad for whatever you intend to do. Uh, you, could, you could pick whatever is of interest to you and, and start sharing it with uh, the, the platform. The one thing I've learned from uh, you know, using uh, Supply Jobs Canada as a place for me to develop my, my business with the Sierra projects is I'm able to get immediate feedback from a community of professionals who already, they, even though I'm sharing those things free, with them, but they are also providing me with feedback that I now use to mm. further develop my product or my service. So that's the way I see uh, the Supply Jobs Canada Network as being different from uh, Sierra projects. And also to add that currently you will see that there are a couple of guys who are already doing this thing I'm talking about. Uh, we have Adebayo Adeleke who is a consultant, you know, with, is within that group as well. And then he teaches, he does, he's also teaching in some, some schools. So one of the things I can encourage you to do is to see uh, and approach some of these schools. You know, I know it looks like a, a bold thing for you to do, but I've actually encouraged some of the guys in that network. To yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And they're currently working. They actually, one of them who is in Calgary, already got an appointment with a school there, you know, to teach here. He's into uh, the legal aspects of things. And he's already uh, he already got an appointment with his school there to teach them business law. So um, that is the reason why the Supply Jobs Canada network was set up for us as a community of, of professionals, consultants, mentors, and all of that to work together to empower ourselves, so that we yeah. can, uh, even empower more people, you know, as a community, uh, be it newcomers who are coming in newly into Canada, be those among those who are trying to start a business that aligns with you know our vision the vision of uh, consulting uh, opportunities for for our group so this also provides that platform for you to be able to share your dream with those guys who are members of that network by helping them by providing your advice and if you know if you are providing value they will definitely pay for it that, that's our experience. If I provide value, if I solve their problem, definitely they're gonna, they're gonna, uh, they're not gonna see any big deal when I ask that they pay for my service. So that's the way I would like you to approach it. Uh, you know, uh, just adding there uh, going forward in terms of how you interact with the Supply Jobs Canada network. We all have our own businesses, and we come there for feedback. Yeah. And one thing I would like to say that I actually saw your progress. I mean, after coming here, I saw your step by step going. And the thing is, what I always felt about you, that is very special, that you never lose hope. You're very focused. And the thing is, that is uh, that is an example for me. I, I, I like that because once there was no serial jobs, in fact, you started that. And after that, I only knew you. And you see that what is special about Supply Jobs Canada, that group that you actually empower everyone in the group. 
they all are actually participating that means that we are supply jobs canada it's not abiyudin is only supply jobs yeah, canada yeah. you have you have you have actually provided that strength in others and everyone is very enthusiastically sharing their opinions yeah. if although they are very busy a person is a professor at a university a person every manager in different organization supply chain they are always very busy and very responsible person but they are finding some time to share their opinions mm -hmm. and very enthusiastically enthusiastically they are doing that so it's something great I'd that like is a strain of a community for you you know yeah. together we we are together we are better i remember this um this uh is it what i will call it now this is a proverb that says that if you want to go fast go alone <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you want to go far you know go go with others right so that that's really the philosophy uh for the yes, you know founding the supply jobs canada network you know okay so um i agree at this point, I think there might be people who are listening to us who will be like, okay, well, uh, Majel, you know what? I am also in Bangladesh right now, and uh, apparently um, I'm looking forward to moving to Canada and also to integrate uh, as you did within 90 days. Well, what are those three things that you'd like to share with them, you know, to help them to uh, integrate quickly and then also uh, to break into their profession here in Canada? The thing is, first of all, uh, you need to have the confidence. Actually, you need to have the confidence that uh, like Canada is a foreign country to you for a newcomer uh, or a person who is planning to come in Canada. It's a new country, but you always feel that the Canadian employers, they actually like diversity. First of all, my organization, we have like 30 plus, uh, we have uh, people from 30 plus countries in our in our organization. We, we, we respect each other. So we respect diversity. We love diversity. And in Canada, it is like diversity is our strength. So never think that only native people will be considered for jobs here no don't think like that first thing the also i'd like to say that before coming here do proper research on your job field job prospect right that after coming here actually where you can uh, apply or which fields or uh, which organizations uh, you can apply right there are different employment agencies here as well. If you want, you can uh, do some research on that as well. The next thing is the certifications or degrees in your relevant field. For example, supply job, uh, supply chain. Uh, there are different courses like uh, in, in Toronto, we have like uh, courses in Humber, courses in Seneca College, different. Like, okay, so like George Brown. So do research on that, that uh, uh, within like few months or like uh, one or two years, if you can complete a uh, certification and if you can manage a co-op thing, uh, in that case, uh, uh, it will help you land job in your own field. I do not suggest changing field, first of all, because the thing is when you uh, add, uh, uh, I mean, after coming here, when you start a job in your own field, it's like you have the prior experience and you have the confidence here. So try first, try job, uh, try a searching job in your own field. And if not possible, then actually think about changing that. But first try to uh, search job in your own field. Do not lose confidence. And the other thing is networking. I would like to say the networking is very, very important. Uh, try to uh, connect with different professionals in LinkedIn, uh, professionals in your field in LinkedIn, uh, and also update your uh, LinkedIn profile. That is very, very important. Always keep it updated and try to ensure the job responsibility because the language they're proper try to uh, mention the numbers percentage I mean everyone has some accomplishments right you are saving like some percent uh, in your organization you have added some value just uh, claim that right you need to uh, um, uh, inform the other person because that person the Canadian employers do not know about you so yeah. try to help them know about you right and uh, uh, you know that uh, as, as I've already shared that job searching here is a job, right? Why? Because for applying for each job, you at least need to spend like 40 to 60 minutes after each job minimum it is important you need to do a research on that job advertisement read the qualifications read the job and, and try to structure your resume properly so that uh, if an employer actually goes through the resume like for like 10 to 20 seconds first 10 to 20 seconds then they have an idea about your personality about your career right so it's important so I always believe in that and stay open. Even after getting the job, always stay open, stay responsive, respect others. Because here people are from different countries, they're from different cultures. So what is, is actually okay to 
to you may not be okay to others. It's very normal, right? So uh, try to be prepared for that, right? And mm. try to stay happy. It's a new country. It will take some time to adjust, get adjusted with the, uh, uh, not only the culture, but also the weather here, right? So yeah. it is fine. So uh, what I feel that give yourself some pay, uh, comfort and also go with confidence and also do not lose uh, confidence do not lose your temper I always think like that mm, great 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 that's a lot I mean I don't know if I can do justice to summarizing all of that but uh, yeah I hope that uh, everyone who is listening here uh, heard some of the things I mean it's about confidence uh, it's also about uh, researching you know it's about connecting with uh, a lot of professionals within your industry uh, and it's also about networking uh, within a community you know we talked about supply jobs Canada earlier about how uh, we we connected uh, which was through my own activity within the supply jobs Canada community and uh, you know we you have a leverage when you work within a community you have opportunities for people to uh, provide you with referral or with references because you've been able to build some type of confidence or some types of uh, rapport within that community and they can um, vouch for you. Um, you know, the thing that is very, very key about that, if I may add that to it, is that when you're coming from other countries, you do not have a social footprint in Canada. So for you to have that social footprint, it takes you maybe going to work in another job so that you can build some trust within the industry. But another great way to do that is by joining a particular community, uh, you know, like the Supplies of Canada community, or you can go volunteer for maybe a nonprofit or, you know, that way you're able to connect, you're able to build your social footprint here in Canada. Uh, it's it's very huge, you know, what I'm talking about here. I know a lot of people use the catchphrase uh, networking. You know, sometimes people will be like, okay, what is this networking? I don't get what you're talking about. <laughs> so in the end, this is what it's about. It's about building a social footprint in Canada. Yes. There's one thing I always tell people that you do business with people that you trust, okay? It's the same thing as getting a job. If you do not trust somebody, you do not do business with them. It's the same thing, you know. I mean, you're coming from all over the, uh, the world and you're coming to Canada, nobody knows you, you don't have any uh, network, then hardly do people trust you. And because of that, they might not be able to give you a job. But if you do have people who trust you, who will provide referrals, provide references, yeah, they are more confident that yes, for this person to vouch for you, then it means you have something to offer. So that's why they keep using that catchphrase word networking, but I hope you got it. Yeah. That's very, very huge. So um, thanks so much, uh, uh, Major. So what we would like to get from you now, if it's possible that you can, you know, give us a parting word, like, okay, maybe a philosophy, uh, maybe, you know, a word of encouragement to those guys who are still looking um, they're here in Canada already, but they're struggling. Apparently, they didn't get their job within 90 days like he did. <laughs> Maybe they have been here for one year, and you know it hasn't still happened. You know, it's it's possible. There are there are people like that, and they've done all of these things that you talked about. So, what kind of word, what kind of word of encouragement, what kind of philosophy that you can share with them? I think will make a difference for them. I would like to say that. Uh... Uh, it is very important to stay positive. It is very important. It's a short life, so always try to stay, uh, stay positive. Don't take much stress. Always try to be generous because the, you know what? Actually, it will help you maintain a strong relationship with others. So the thing is, relationship is one thing, and I think effective relationship, right? So try to uh, actually, you know, that cooperate with others. Try to maintain good relationship. Help others whenever possible. For example, if any newcomer calls me through LinkedIn, if anyone knocks me on LinkedIn, I just give them the phone number. That's, yeah, call me. Call me in the weekend. So I, I'm always very helpful. I always try to be helpful about that. I, uh, so whenever they call, for example, the, uh, the last week when a person actually uh, called me, it was like around like one hour conversation with them. And every second I try to give them a 
effective information so that that person does not only get confidence but also uh, gets proper information and i always try to give them uh, i always try to give them that courage that don't think yourself alone we are with you like that that feeling right and i, I what i also expect that when a newcomer calls you as well do the same thing with them as well that is the strength of the community right we yeah. we need that and personally i always believe that do your best and god will do the rest so yeah. that's the final great, thing great great thanks so much uh thanks for all that your time i mean it's a weekend and uh, you would think that uh you know be with family but here you because you're passionate about this thing you uh took your time you know more than one hour to talk about these things i really appreciate your time on the airport uh looking forward to uh, you know getting more of your contribution uh you know within our community to build it even more stronger than this as it is for today so uh thanks so much and you have a great weekend anytime okay. anytime for you and and it, it, anytime. our great week we see we start another work week from tomorrow hopefully uh you have a wonderful one out there as well okay yeah. then